All right, guys, we got a no AC call at this location. Got all my stuff ready. There's our ladder hatch way up there in the back. So I'm about to jump over some boxes and see if I can't grab that ladder. All right, we'll see you on the top, guys. So today we have a warm kitchen in a restaurant and this unit right here apparently is the culprit. So let's take a look at our data tag. Looks like it's from 1999 so we got about a 20 year old unit, almost 21 years old. So you can tell we got no moisture, no moisture coming out of the trap. Our condensing fans are spinning. They don't seem to be spinning very fast. Moving much air at all, really. And they're blowing, just not very much. Condensing coil is cool. So I'm 99% sure our compressors are not running. At this point, normally I would take a supply temp just to kind of see where we stand. But yeah, let me do that. I'm pretty sure our return and supply are going to be the same though. So I mean, if we had any sort of cooling going on, I'd be able to hear my compressors, my condensing coil would feel warm, and I'd have some moisture coming out of there. It's about 95 degrees out. Probably 120 up on this roof. So we'll give that a minute and see what's going on here. If you look over there at our condensing motor, you can see somebody just left the wires just hanging out again. So, depending on what we find out, we'll probably have to fix that up. I don't want those wires to dry rot and start shorting out on that cabinet. Yeah, it looks like our temperature is starting to equalize here, about 83 degrees. Yeah, so we have nothing going on in this unit. All right, guys, let me pull this panel open and see what we can find out. Real quick, guys, I just noticed this as I started taking off my control panel. I'm not sure how well this will pick up on film because of the shutter speed of the camera, but this condensing fan motor is spinning much, much faster than this condensing fan motor. See if I can get them both in the same shot, you get a little bit of a comparison. And actually, if you see what's going on there with my scientific measuring tool, my hat, that condensing fan motor, I believe, is dead, and we're actually sucking air through it and dumping it out on this side. So that's our first issue. Let's get in this control panel and see what's going on. So, here's our control panel, guys. What I'm assuming is stage one compressor is nice and cool, hasn't been running at all. Stage two compressor is the same way. Hasn't been running at all. We get over here, we see our capacitor just hanging there. That's that's really irresponsible of somebody. Back there is our condensing fan motor that was spinning slowly. It looks like it's been replaced with a uh, universal motor. There's our working condensing fan motor. Now that one, it's probably hard to tell on camera, but it is spinning backwards. So whatever's going on with that one, it's not doing anything. It could be hooked up to one of these head pressure switches as a uh, fan cycling head pressure control, I'm not sure yet. But what we're gonna do next is I'm just gonna 
check these pressure controls in series and see if we're off on low pressure somehow. Now this unit no longer has a schematic. So I had to manually trace the wires going from the contactor to the compressor lockout board just so I could figure out which pressure switches work which circuit. So over here, I believe this is our circuit number two. I just drew some orange X's on there for now and kind of put some dots on this wire going through my pressure switches. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna test through my high pressure and my low pressure switches at the same time and see if I have a reading. Now this is what I believe stage two. We're going right over here to our outgoing signal from our compressor lockout board. And as you can tell, we don't have anything. We don't have any continuity. Listen closely, you can hear the beeping noise. I don't have anything on there. So let's check our other circuit. And again, guys, if it wasn't obvious, this unit is off, so I can just touch anything I want, really. See if I can do this with one hand. It's not really helping me out here. That's why I need a camera guy. All right, we're dangling, but we are connected to that line. Now, real quick, before we lose our connection, let's jump up here. Now, we do have continuity through that circuit, so that circuit is fine. So, we must have a problem somewhere in our pressure switches. It's probably just uh, a leaker. I mean, it's a 20-year-old system, so we're probably looking at a leak. But actually... If you look, I don't know if it'll pick it up on camera, but this little tiny wear mark right there, I just noticed this. That looks like it's just rubbed it completely through. So, I'm gonna clip that wire nut it, and then we'll repeat this test and see if that did anything. As you can see, our wire has been spliced together. Now let's repeat this test. Hey, we still don't have any continuity. So, at this point, I have no choice but to attach my gauges and see if, see if our system is flat or not. But real quick before I do that, let's take a look at this compressor. It's starting to really, really get bad, especially around our suction side right here. The compressor shell is starting to really, really rust out on it. Let's get these wires out of the way. There you go back here. Now I do see a little bit of oil right there next to that service port. We could just be leaking out of a, a bad Schrader core. Not real sure yet, but let's, uh, let's get some gauges on this unit and see what we're dealing with. All right, I got my Z gauges on here, my manifold gauges here. You can get back there and kind of see. It looks like we're equalized, so the system's not flat, like I was expecting it. Um, I've isolated my liquid line pressure switch over there. Let me see if we got continuity on this one. All right, so that switch is open for some reason. Let me go on this other side and see if this side is closed. Not sure if I can do this with one hand. There we go. So our high side switch is closed. Our liquid line switch is open. 
which apparently is our low pressure switch, but that is the liquid line going into our evaporator right there. So let me dig into this a little bit further and see what we got going on. So let me show what we got going on now. So what I've done only for testing purposes is I have bypassed my discharge line pressure switch and my liquid line pressure switch. I just wire nutted them together for now. Again, only for testing purposes. This way I can test if anything else is in the circuit because I don't wanna quote my customer and say, hey, you need a new pressure switch because obviously we have pressure. So both my switches should be satisfied. I don't wanna quote a pressure switch, come back, install the pressure switch, and then find out, oh, your contactors are bad or your compressor lockout board is bad or something else down the road is bad. So we're just doing this temporarily to check the rest of the system. So let's just double check, make sure I have continuity now through my bypass switches. If you can hear my meter beeping, we do have continuity. So at this point, we're gonna turn power back on and see what comes on and what doesn't. I jumped out our thermostat just to make sure I was getting a call for cooling. The unit came on in two stage cooling. I got about 15 amps on both compressors. Now the compressor back here, if you can see, I don't know how well that's gonna pick up on camera. I don't know how well you can hear me. It's kind of noisy in here, but if you look at our high side pressure, we're just about 425 PSI on our discharge side, which is a little bit too high. Low side looks to be about 75 PSI. So we might just be dealing with a coil that just badly needs to be split. Let me double check our refrigerant that we're dealing with this in this system. I want to say we're dealing with 22 just based on the age, but let's be sure. Because you know what happens when you assume you're usually right. No, that's wrong. You're usually wrong. And you end up looking like a dumbass. Pardon my French. Let's see, RLA, LRA, 22, yep, right there. So we're dealing with 22, so our pressures definitely shouldn't be that high. Yeah, it looks like we have having a hard time reading that, but we got about 160 degree condensing temperature, which obviously is way too high. That could have been what killed those pressure switches. So, let me pull some stuff apart and look into this further. Now real quick, one of the bad designs about this system is anytime you're working in the condensing section you, and it's running, you have to have this panel over top because the compressors are not isolated from the condensing coil. So if you have that panel away from those, away from that section, obviously you're just gonna be sucking air in through that side and instead of the coil. So we kinda gotta work around that a little bit of a handicap right there. All right, so we're still running. Let's check out our supply temperature. We got about 59 degrees supply and our head pressure on what I believe is stage number two. Nothing's labeled, so I don't really know for sure. But our head pressure is insane. Now, I tried my, my scientific measurement of air flow through my condenser, which is my hat being thrown out of condensing coil, and it's not even, not even picking it up. Picking it up a little bit over here, but this side I'm, I'm barely getting any airflow through there at all Let's get some hands on there. It's nice and hot Nice and hot very very little air going through there so I'll bet you in between this coil There's just a blanket of cottonwood and lint and everything else so I'm gonna let the customer know what we need to do next, which is replace both those pressure switches and open this condensing coil up, split it, clean it, uh, fix that wiring mess that's over there, and clean up some of this wiring that's inside here. 
Now this location, they have their own maintenance crew, so they might not allow me to do the work. They might just come back and do it themselves, but we'll let them know and see what they want to do. Real quick before I start wrapping this up, I just wanted to step back and take a look at the big picture. Our belt looks good. I don't know if it's picking up on camera, but our belt is pretty new. Not a whole lot of slop in it. Blower assembly is just, just dirty. I'm actually going to quote to pull that and clean it because it's just so dirty. Normally I don't do that on rooftop units because they don't, I don't find a whole lot of crud buildup in, in rooftop units in my area. But uh, that one, that one is very, very bad. So it's, it's affecting our airflow, I'm sure. Go over here, check our filters. Filters aren't bad. The operator coil's pretty clean, so I'm not too concerned about that. But, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to wire everything back up the way it was, because I don't want to leave anything bypassed, because I'm not sure who's gonna come up here and and decide to play around this with this unit and I don't want to take the blame for it so I'm gonna wire everything back up the way it was and uh, yeah see what they want to do hey guys real quick I just wanted to recap a couple things that I didn't get a chance to actually address in the video uh, the first of which being that condensing fan motor that was spinning kind of slow on the left hand side. Um, that I really didn't find an actual problem with. Once I had the capacitor secured in place during my final test, the fan was spinning just fine and seemed to stay that way. So that was partially a mystery. The other thing was the stage one compressor, when I initially walked up on it, it was off. Um, that also, I didn't find a real good reason why that was off. I believe it was off on head pressure and locked out on the control board. And during my testing, when I cycled power to check my various components, I reset the control board and reset the lockout code um, because after that stage one came on seemed to work okay chances are it'll go out again on high head pressure unless the customer decides to have that condensing coil split and properly clean um, but I just want to take a minute and address those issues just in case anybody out there in YouTube land was wondering but Anyway guys, thanks for watching, as always, like and subscribe.